Welcome to a second video on the applications of rational equations. Let's go ahead and take a look at a couple more examples. One person can complete a task eight hours sooner than another person. Working together, both people can perform the task in three hours. How many hours does it take each person to complete the task working alone? Okay, so this problem is a little more challenging than the previous examples in the other video. But the key point here is if it takes someone, let's say, five hours to complete a task, their rate would be one-fifth of the task per hour. Or if it took them six hours, it, the rate would be one-sixth. Seven hours would be one-seventh per hour, and so on. So in this problem, we have a slower person and a faster person. And the faster person can complete the task eight hours sooner. So if the total time for the slower person was x hours, then the faster person would complete the same task in x minus eight hours. Now what we want to do is take a look at their rates. If the total time to complete the job is x hours, then the rate would be one over x of the job per hour. And for the faster person, it would be one over x minus eight of the job per hour. So in any case, if we know the total time it takes someone to complete a job, the reciprocal would be the rate per hour for that job. In the problem, it states that working together, they can complete the task in three hours, which means their combined rate would be one-third of the job per hour. So with all of this information, we can write an equation where the rate of the slower person plus the rate of the faster person must equal the total rate, which again, if it takes three hours, would be one-third of the job per hour. So this is the equation that we have to set up and solve in order to determine how long it will take each person working alone. Let's take this over to the next screen and solve this. So we have a rational equation here. We'll multiply both sides of the equation by the LCD, or least common denominator, which would be the product of all three denominators. So we have to multiply each of these by three times x times x minus eight. Let's go ahead and set this up. So notice we're not obtaining the common denominator. We're multiplying each term by the LCD over one. Let's go ahead and simplify. Notice here the x's simplify out. We're left with three times x minus eight, plus here the x minus eight simplify out. We're left with three x equals. Here the three simplifies out. We're left with x times x minus eight. Let's go ahead and clear the parentheses. So we'll distribute the three, distribute the x. Notice we have a quadratic equation. Let's go ahead and clean this up, set it equal to zero, and see if it factors. So here we have like terms, this would be 6x minus 24. Now let's go ahead and move these terms to the other side. We'll add 24 to both sides and also subtract 6x. So we have 0 equals x squared minus 14x plus 24. Looks like this will factor factors of 24 that add to negative 14, negative 12, and negative 2. So it looks like x equals 12 or x equals 2. Let's go ahead and go back to the original problem and check these solutions. Again, the possibilities were x equals 12 and x equals 2. Let's take a look at x equals 2 first. Remember, the question wants us to determine how long it takes each person to complete the task alone and that would be x and x minus eight. The problem with x equals two is that we can't have a time that would be negative. Two minus eight is negative six, that doesn't make sense. So x equals two is an extraneous solution. Let's check 12. If it takes a slower person 12 hours, well 12 minus eight, that would be four hours for the faster person. So those are the two answers we're looking for. The slower person would take 12 hours working alone, and the faster person would take four hours working alone. Let's take a look at another problem. The speed of a passenger train is 12 miles per hour faster than the speed of a freight train. The passenger train travels 330 miles in the same time it takes the freight train to travel 270 miles. Find the speed of each train. Okay, so the first thing we have to remember is that distance equals rate times time. So the first thing we're going to do is just record all the information that's given in this question in a table. So we have distance, rate, and time, and we also have a passenger train and a freight train. 
So it says the speed of the passenger train is 12 miles per hour faster than the speed of the freight train. So the passenger train is 12 miles per hour faster. So if we let the rate of the freight train equal r, then the passenger train would be going r plus 12 miles per hour. Next, the passenger train travels 330 miles in the same time it takes the freight train to travel 270 miles. There's a very important detail in here. It says that they travel these two distances in the same time. So whatever t is, it's the same. So if I use a t here, I can use a t here as well. Again, we know that distance equals rate times time. If I was to solve this equation for t, we would have the time must equal the distance divided by the rate. The reason this is so important is if these two times are the same, then the distance divided by the rates must equal each other. Let me say that again. If these two times are the same, then it must be true that the distance divided by the rate must also be the same. So what we can do is write an equation where we have the distance divided by the rate for the passenger train must equal the distance divided by the rate for the freight train. So this is the equation that we have to set up and solve. Again, let's take this over to the next screen. This is a proportion, so we could cross multiply, but I'll go ahead and keep it consistent and multiply every term by what would be the LCD. And in this case, the least common denominator would be r times r plus 12. So when we simplify here, the r plus 12 simplify out, we're left with 330r must equal, here the factor of r simplifies out, we're left with 270 times r plus 12. Let's go ahead and solve for r. Let's go ahead and clear the parentheses here. We'd have 270r plus 270 times 12 is 3,240. Let's go ahead and subtract 270r on both sides. This would give us 60r equals 3,240. Divide both sides by 60. So r is equal to 54, I believe it was miles per hour. Let's go back and make sure we answer the question now. And we did find that r was equal to 54 miles per hour. Okay, but the question says, what is the speed of each train? Well, the freight train's rate is r, so this is 54 miles per hour, but the passenger train would be going r plus 12, 54 plus 12 would be 66 miles per hour. So it is important that we go back and make sure that we do answer the question once we have solved for some specific variable. Okay, I hope you found these explanations helpful. Thank you for watching.